Hi everyone, hi. Um, hi, welcome back. Um, I'm Shelly and today we're gonna be doing something new. So, um, tell me what you think about this video and this video concept. So, a few weeks ago, I'm not really sure when this is gonna go up, but when I did the Mooks and the Grapes bucket list book tag, I talked through a bunch of classic tomes uh, that I wanted to read before I died. And then, you know, I watch our, our beloved Steve Donahue um, say, you know, we, we are not guaranteed, ooh, okay, okay, um, that we are not guaranteed 80 or 85 years on this planet and, you know, that we should, like, get to it, to our bucket list books. And I really took that to heart. And, um, and I was like, and, and, and besides that, besides Donahue's video, I have been thinking all about the, the books that I want to read before I die, the, one, the ones that I mentioned in the video and the ones that I have in my mind. And I don't want to wait anymore. I, I want to get to them. So this is what I was thinking. I have decided uh, more or less that I don't love doing single book reviews. I really enjoyed the video I made about Babar because I was talking about something more than just the book. I was talking about uh, the art and the implications of the story and the historical context and I thought that that was really interesting. It was something that really interested me. Um, but single book reviews, not wrap ups or Friday reads, just individual single book reviews, I put a lot of pressure on myself to say the right thing, to include the right thoughts. And I don't like that feeling. I also, um, when I do reviews, I, I would rather write out my thoughts, um, kick around some ideas, develop the ideas, learn a little more about the author. I would rather have a more well-rounded um, review, which doesn't happen a day or two after I've read the book. Um, it just, it doesn't. It takes me a little while to develop my thoughts. and. So a lot of times between the pressure of that I put on myself to get a review up and saying the right thing and then not doing it in the way that I like to process things, it makes for not the best video in my opinion. The one, not, not one that I, I love to film. But what I love to do is I love to talk while I'm processing a book. So the book I'm gonna be processing with you all is Virginia Woolf's Mrs. Dalloway. I'm actually going to put my exact copy in the show notes um, in the description box so that if you all wanted to find this copy and follow along, um, then you can. But I thought that I would come on here just in this exact same spot and um, every time I read a chunk of this book, I would process my thoughts with you. And this way, if you have read the book, you can watch the whole video as I process. Um, and if you haven't read the book, then you can watch the introduction and maybe the first check-in where I talk about what I think this book is about, um, what I am gathering this book is going to, where this is gonna go, my impressions of the first chapters. Well, this doesn't have chapters, so it's a bad example, but the first um, section, I can tell you what, what, I, what I know about the book, and then you can skip to the end and get my concluding thoughts. Um, and I'm gonna split it up into chapters. Hopefully, the way this video flows it will you'll just know as it goes along so um before i start discussing any section i'm going to put up a little um transition screen that says what pages i read or what chapters i read if i read a book with chapters um and i wanted to do this with classics because um classics are out there uh, we all lots of us want to read them lots of lots of us on book two have read them and, um, and I haven't read a ton of classics. Um, I've never identified myself as a classics reader, and I want that to change. I want to grow as a reader, and I don't want to put off the books that are calling my name, the ones that will enrich my life and my soul, um, until a day where I think I'll have time. I have some time now, and I want to make time for the books that are speaking to me in some way, like 
Mrs. Dalloway. So, Mrs. Dalloway, let's get into it. Mrs. Dalloway, I don't, I'm going to just tell you what I know about the book, uh, and then the first check-in will be forthcoming. For you, it will be, it will be a, a few seconds away, but for me, it'll be, you know, probably tomorrow. But anyways, uh, Virginia Woolf wrote Mrs. Dalloway, and I am doing this as a buddy read with the wonderful Larry Has Opinions and the brilliant Rachel is Reading. Um, we are doing it as a buddy read together, and um, what I know about Mrs. Dalloway is that it's a modern, modernist novel. Correct me if I'm wrong, please. Um, it's a modernist novel. Um, it was, I don't even know when it was published. Let's see. Um, it was published in 1925, um, and I know that it takes place over the course of a single day. I also know that the Pulitzer Prize winner by Michael Cunningham, The Hours, is based off of Mrs. Dalloway. So Larry and I had this idea that we would read The Hours, and then we realized, um, well, we, we kind of figured out that it was about Mrs. Dalloway. And so we thought we'd start with Mrs. Dalloway and then read the hours in a little bit. So that's what I know. That's all I know about Mrs. Dalloway. Um, and I'm excited to get into it with you all. And I hope that you'll all follow along on this journey. And oh, and I also wanted to say this is not, I might call this a reading vlog. I'm not really sure what I'll call these. Maybe it's like process with me, Mrs. Dalloway or something. Um, but reading vlog seems to be um, the universal term of like checking in about your, your reading um, periodically throughout the week. Uh, however, I, I don't really want to take you around in different spots in my house, um, partially because I have this set up here and it, it's working for me, um, and partially because I have kids and um, I really have some feelings about not putting them on YouTube. Um, you know, this is my, my, uh, my shindig and not theirs. And so, yeah, um, so I will be checking in that it will probably always be in this spot, but you know, you never know. I may change my mind later. Okay. So I'll see you for the first check-in in a few seconds for you and maybe in a day or so for me. All right, the first 50 pages of Mrs. Dalloway, that's what I read yesterday, and I have some thoughts. <laughs> um, first of all, in the, um, though she doesn't, though Virginia Woolf doesn't put chapters in, and please tell me if the, the versions are all consistent, um, but at least in my version, though there are not any chapters, there are page breaks, um, which I am treating as chapters. So if you do have um, a different version and there are page breaks as well, uh, then I read through the first three page breaks, which was about um, the which was about 50 pages here. Um, and it's been a really interesting journey. So what I'm noticing about Virginia Woolf's uh, writing style, at least with Mrs. Dalloway, is that it's very stream of consciousness and it's, um, it's, it, it passes through one person to another. And um, it really reminded me of a David Foster Wallace quote. Um, I'm probably gonna misquote it, but the sentiment was, um, we all have these rich interior lives that no one else is privy to. And in the book, Mrs. Dalloway, we are um, able to, we're Sorry. able to, all right, so in, in Mrs. Dalloway, we are actually able to see the interior lives of many, many characters, especially that of the opening scene. So it's kind of interesting. I remember um, in one specific part, there is a car that comes by and, it, you know, there's a lot of excitement because cars are a rarity. That's what I'm gathering in this, um, in the 19, 1925 and in England. Um, and, uh, so this car comes by and it's like Virginia Woolf, uh, starts with, I believe Mrs. Dalloway and then kind of works her way around and talks about, um, through a stream of consciousness, a lot of every, a lot of people's perspectives, um, on the car. Um, and then as the scene goes on, there is, uh, a man sitting in a park and we get, uh, his his interior life and then it passes to his wife 
and it gets you get her thoughts um, on her husband and then as we move it's almost like a camera moving I mean it's it's very very interesting and, and I'm really jiving with the style but as uh, as we move through it goes uh, very seamlessly through the woman um, and her thoughts about her husband to a woman walking by walking by the couple and then her thoughts on the man and the woman in the park it's very interesting i really am jiving with the style i i like this kind of thing um all of the books that i've read that have been similar to this came afterwards um i thought about infinite jests there um david foster wallace talks a lot about different characters um through different perspectives so you get a different idea of what someone is like um through the perspectives of many different characters and it changes based on who's looking at, at, at a particular person in the novel. Um, and then I thought about Marcel Proust, um, who a lot of times you're really up in their head and exploring um, Swan, Swan's perspective. And I remember specifically in, um, in Search of Lost Time, there was one part where uh, Swan is really just... Uh, is um, all in his head and thinking about uh, what he's gonna do in the next couple of minutes and then he runs into a character and I was so into Marcel Proust um, or in, inside of Swan's head that when uh, th that when that character ran into uh, when Swan ran into that other character I literally gasped because it shocked me so much I was so into the, the moment um, and so it kind of reminded, the, Mrs. Dalloway kind of reminded me of that as well. Um, the story is, um, so far it's about Clarissa who's going to throw a party that night. And Clarissa uh, it what once was in love with a woman. And I didn't realize that it was, um, it was about that either. That really surprised me. Um, the last section I wrote is about we're in the mind of Peter Walsh, and I'm not really sure about that guy. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. I am not really sure about Peter Walsh. I have a feeling that he doesn't have a very good sense of reality. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't really know about him. Um, the jury is still out about what I think about that character. Um, so, so yeah, we're, we'll see how it goes. But, um, but that's my first check-in. I'll actually probably read the, that third section again, um, Peter Walsh's section, because I, I feel like I missed it and I read it when I was a little bit tired. I want to make sure I get everything. Um, I'm really enjoying Clarissa or Mrs. Dalloway, and I love her love of sentimentality um, and her, I'm, I'm all about her, the love story that she had in her youth with, an, with another woman. I love that. I think it's beautiful. So we'll see where it goes. I'm interested. I'm intrigued, and I'm definitely enjoying the writing style, though it did take me about 12 pages t before it clicked. I was like, what is going on? What is going on? And then it clicked and I was like, oh, okay, I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing, Virginia Woolf. And I really, I, I, I like it. It's, it's working for me. Okay, check in tomorrow. Bye. Okay, check in number two um, with Mrs. Dalloway. Um, wow, it's, um, okay, so I'm on page 120 now, and my book totals at 177 pages. So I know that not everyone is going to have this copy, and I checked with my group, I checked with Larry and Rachel, and Rachel said that she doesn't have any page breaks in her book, um, so I don't know if the page breaks were put in there uh, because of this edition, or I I'm not really sure what's going on with the, um, with my page breaks. So I don't want to use that now as a measure for how I'm talking about the book. So I'm on page 120 of 177 and um, it's the, the, it, the story is going. I, I really am enjoying it. Um, <clears throat> I'm noticing that plot wise, there's not a ton going on. I, um, Clarissa is, Clarissa Dalloway is planning a party and I know that I want to eventually get to the party. Whoop, one sec. I hope that I get to see the party unfold. That's what I'm hoping for. But other than that, I feel as if everybody is kind of a messed up character. Messed up as in like their internal lives are very fraught and, um, a little bit dark, uh, and 
a bit twisted. So I have listed the characters that I am, um, that, that uh, Virginia Woolf has focused on and I thought I would go through them and like how I see them um, and kind of summarize their, their characters for this check-in, at least so far at 120 pages. So the first one is Peter Walsh, who I said I wasn't sure about that guy. And he seems to be, um, as Clarissa described him, Peter Walsh is always in love with the wrong person at the wrong time, and he's always in love with something. And Peter Walsh himself is um, was in love with Clarissa at one point, and then sort of let her go with Richard Dalloway. He is mourning his loss. It's like he he loved her, and though he doesn't love her anymore, he's sad that he doesn't have her or that he never did have her, and he's not over it. Um, and he really cares about her opinion, and he really um, is hard on himself about the emotions that he has. He's, he's definitely an odd... He's just an odd character. I think everyone is an odd character, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say that throughout the whole thing. Um, then there is the couple in the park. I, I I didn't realize at the beginning of the book that they would become a major player in the story, and they still haven't been brought into Clarissa's uh, world. They're still in their own world, and the um, the character is Septimus and uh, Rezia Re Rezia. <laughs> So Septimus is the husband. He's clearly suffering from sort of PTSD or um, uh, the, uh, he's living with this traumatic incident that he seems like he can't get over. And he is uh, suffering from uh, like a depression because he has thought about suicide. And the, he, he's um, got a lot of, he's, he's very dark. And they, there was this section where it was like a dream sequence about the solitary stranger, I think that, or solitary, solitary, solitary traveler. I read that part twice. I probably have to go back to it because I'm not really exactly sure what they're talking about um, or what he's dreaming about. But the dream sequence was really um, vivid and, and I thought it was very, it was uh, fascinating to read. Um, but Septimus is definitely struggling with dark feelings and feeling very down and his poor wife Rezia she just wants to um, she just wants him to be better and she is suffering because he is suffering like classic codependency right um, oops, something in the air so Rezia is um, an odd character because she well, not odd she just really wants her husband to feel better and she is taking him to all these doctors who are saying that he, there's nothing wrong with him. And she's clearly lost weight. She's not wearing her wedding ring anymore um, because of what I'm guessing is stress or um, this this feeling of downness in her life because of her husband, Septimus. Um, and I that's been interesting. And all she, I, I feel for her because all she wants to do is for him to get better. Um, and that's, following her story again like this the, the whole the whole story is like interesting uh fascinating but it's also sort of seeped in uh, some sadness um which I usually don't mind but then at the end of my copy um there is a timeline for Virginia Woolf and I didn't realize that she struggled with mental health in the way that she did for so long um, and that actually piqued my interest in a biography of her so if you know of a good biography of Virginia Woolf please let me know um, if you've made it in the video this far okay so um <clears throat> poor Rezia she's just trying to figure out what's going on with her husband and she wants him to be better so that they can have a happy marriage it seems okay then moving on, there is Lady Burton, who is friends with Richard Dalloway, and uh, among other people, and she is a very powerful figure to me. She can sort of manipulate um, the the conversation, and um, she she just has a way with getting people to do with what do what she wants. For example, she is smart. She asks Mr. Dalloway how Clarissa is doing because she knows that if she asks Richard, she's bringing Clarissa in the conversation and not excluding her, even though Clarissa is kind of um, 
excluded often from Miss Lady Burton's parties. Um, and I thought, you know, that's a smart, a smart move on a woman's part to ask, you know, about the wife, even though the wife is never there, um, at least in this setting. Um, she's, yeah, she, she, she's just a, a an intelligent uh, character. I, I, I like her. I think I'm not sure. I mean, all these characters are complex and likable. I don't know, but I am enjoying them, I guess. And then there is Miss Kelman. Miss um, Kelman is the tutor, I believe, for Elizabeth, who is Clarissa's daughter. And she's got a lot going on. She doesn't like Clarissa. She's um, lived a harder life than Clarissa, so she kind of looks down upon uh, Mrs. Dalloway. And she has found church in order to um, get her feelings in order and live her life in a way where she's not constantly bitter at Clarissa and, and, and women in Clarissa's position who are sort of, um, to her a bit, I think a bit vapid and um, looks at down upon Clarissa for having sort of this these feelings of um, being overwhelmed and feeling sad when, according to Miss Kilman, Clarissa has no reason to be because she's never really lived like a difficult life, which is um, interesting. So her internal life is very um, church-based, very God-based, and it's helping her sort of move through life without any, uh, uh, with less bitterness, I suppose. And then there's Clarissa. Oh, Clarissa. I feel like she's a woman with a secret. She's a woman living with, um, with a secret and she keeps a lot of things hidden and she is very controlled and so this party means a lot to her because it seems like it's the only thing she has that's hers that she can control um and there's a suggestion that she should invite somebody that she wants to doesn't want to invite rather and it upsets her and it really seems to me that there is the secret of her sexuality and because she is controlling that, she has to control everything around her. And um, so she's hard to read. Um, she is doesn't let a lot of people in. She even marries Mr. Dalloway because he is his own independent person and thus she can be her own independent person. And I'm not really sure how that's working out for her. So a lot of people, a lot of players in the story that are very thought provoking and um, I had to, I was going to finish like my section where there was a page break, but I kind of had to stop because after I realized, um, after I read what I read about Virginia Woolf and her continuous and ongoing suicide attempts, it made me really sad um, and reading the book made me feel quite heavy and so I, I took a pause um, and and this is where I'm at right now page 120 of 177 okay I'm gonna go I'm always interested in what you have to say but I will see you in my next check-in okay so all right check-in number three I finished Virginia Woolf's um, Mrs. Dalloway I finished it yesterday and um, I don't know. I have, uh, I have some thoughts, I guess. Uh, that's what this is about. So Virginia Woolf's Mrs. Dalloway, um, we, I, the, where I left off was that, um, Septimus and his wife Rezia are in their apartment and he's definitely having some dark feelings and she is reacting internally to those dark feelings. Um, and then very abruptly, uh, Septimus kills himself. And it is all, almost comes out of nowhere, at least for me. Um, I mentioned earlier that, that Proust, um, in one of his uh, scenes, he's all, Swan is all up in his head, and then he runs into somebody, and it, it is almost jarring. It, it took my breath away. I mentioned that earlier um, in another check-in, and this was almost the same thing. It was like, the story was moving along and then all of a sudden out of nowhere almost as if we are um i can't remember whose head we're in but almost as if we are resia it's like this shock that septimus um throws himself i think down down the stairs i, I don't know i know he like falls down and, and ki kills himself in a very uh gr grotesque way um and uh, that was it was very shocking and then instead of lingering on this death scene um, Virginia Woolf almost 
really quickly moves on to Peter Walsh's head. So I believe the ambulance comes and or they're uh, collecting Septimus's body and Peter Walsh sees the ambulance and then he's back in his head. Um, and then we're back in his head and he's still thinking about um, Mrs. Dalloway and Clarissa and this long lost love and the way that he, her life, um, her influence has impacted his life. Um, he thinks of her as this turning point in his life. And then we finally arrive at Clarissa's party. And that is probably the best um, scene, at least for me, because we're again sort of moving in this almost cinematic way, moving from one character to the next and they're all thinking about one another. Um, and they're all judging one another and they all have um, like two characters can describe the same person and they do it in totally different ways which I think is a message that you know we don't we don't all perceive one another in the same way um, and that we all hold our own you know thoughts and biases and judgments um, uh, against one another in, in many in many ways um, and the party scene was very satisfying. I was waiting for Virginia Woolf to bring Septimus into Clarissa's world, and that does happen. Um, I forget who bring the name of the person that brings her in, um, or brings Septimus in. I don't remember. You know what? I'm not gonna look for it now. I can't find it. Um, <clears throat> but um, the, some ugh, I forget who, but they. They end up talking and reporting about how Septimus killed himself or that a man in London killed himself. And that gets Clarissa thinking about death um, and whether death, uh, taking death and, and, and suicide is a win or a loss to life in, in many ways. Um, so it's, uh, it's, it's interesting. And then at the party, all of a sudden Sally shows up. Sally, the, the character who I thought was Clarissa's long lost love. And it's really not, um, Sally is not Clarissa's long lost love, but Sally is to Clarissa um, as, as Clarissa is to Peter. So Peter Walsh thinks that Clarissa was this um, beautiful impact on his life. And I have the sense that Clarissa thinks that Sally was this beautiful and wonderful impact on her life. Um, and though I, I don't think she's necessarily a woman with a secret, but I think she's a woman with layers and she puts on this front, Clarissa puts, puts on this front for people um, and she doesn't let people in. Um, and I don't necessarily think it's because of her sexuality. I think maybe that's the way that she presents to the world. And yet she has um, a lot, she's more complex than people perceive her to be. Um, and you know, Peter Walsh talks about it, that she doesn't, Clarissa doesn't let a lot of people in. And, um, and she even had married Richard Dalloway, uh, Clarissa did, because he was his own independent person and thus she was left alone. She didn't have the codependency of Peter Walsh on her. So the, and the party scene was very fascinating. Um, I, I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed watching um, Clarissa sort of flutter around all of her guests and then being in the mind of the guests and the way that they were experiencing the party. It was a very, very satisfying ending to me. Um, yeah, and that's, you know, that's kind of it. And then I'm going to, I'm going to do like a wrap up. Um, so I'll bring everyone back in. So, you know, if you, those, of, those of the people who didn't want to watch spoilers can come back and I'll tell you all some of my final thoughts and what I'm going to do moving forward with Mrs. Dalloway and Vir Virginia Woolf, um, all together. Okay. <laughs> Wrapping up my thoughts, um, about Virginia Woolf's Mrs. Dalloway, some takeaways. Um, Okay, so I think that this is an extremely successful novel um, for what Virginia Woolf was trying to do, which was to tell a story through this stream of consciousness. I think in that regard, it's extremely successful. Um, I loved that it explored the internal lives of the characters in the book. I love that she zeroed in on a bunch of different characters. Um, and that she was able to tell a really interesting and intriguing story about a day in a life in London, specifically about um, Mrs. Dalloway and her relationship with Peter Walsh um, and, um, and how basically how their childhood and formative years together has shaped who they are now. 
that that is that is you know what I think that Virginia Woolf was trying to do at least with the the first read through of this novel. Um, when I was looking at Virginia Woolf because I really didn't know too much about her, this is my first experience with her. Um, I, I realized that she was writing and experimenting with stream of consciousness. Um, as uh, at the same time as Marcel Proust and James Joyce. I have read James Joyce in college um, and I did not get along with his writing very much. Um, I, I don't even remember the piece that I, I read, I just remember that I didn't care for it, um, which means that I probably should revisit his writing. And then I have read some parts of Swan's Way, specifically and almost fully the, the book or the section Swan in Love. Um, and of those three that I remember, Virginia Woolf tells an extremely engaging story um, and one that is rather accessible to me in regards to stream of consciousness type of writing. Um, I also thought about the way that Virginia Woolf um, takes uh, the perspectives of multiple characters to describe one or two character to describe an individual in the story. So you get, you know, totally different perspectives on Mrs. Dalloway, totally different perspectives on Peter Walsh. Um, and it really, you know, shows uh, how a person can be perceived in many different ways. I thought about the book Infinite Jest um, by David Foster Wallace. He does that quite a bit as well, um, but I still think Virginia Woolf was more successful, partially because of the length. Infinite Jest is over a thousand pages. Um, it's very like in your head, in in Wallace's head throughout, and um, this I felt like was a more successful and concise um, study, character study, using that technique. Um, Gosh, I hope that made sense. So I really, really did like the book. Now, in regards to my group members, um, I some of the group members, though I don't want to like speak for them or anything, they found the book tedious and hard to get along with. I know that other people have DNF'd the book, and um, and and those who uh, here in BookTube have mentioned that they didn't get along with it the first read through, but then they've uh, revisited the uh, Mrs. Dalloway and they ended up liking it more the second time around. So um, I would say this, I would say this, if you pick up the book and you read the first 20 pages and you are really disliking it, but you're holding out for um, a change, um, for the narrative to change or the, the writing style to change, uh, don't hold out. She sticks with the stream of consciousness uh, through multiple perspectives throughout the entire book. Um, and so if you're, you know, if you're finding the writing maybe tedious um, or you're like, I think maybe, oh, hey, turn that off, Bubba. Um, and you think it might change, don't, don't hold out for it. Just don't hold out for it. So um, at least, you know, give the book at least, it took me, you know, 15 pages to get on with it. Um, I would say to stick with it because it is a really uh, interesting novel about our interior lives, the interior lives of humans. Um, so I will say that. However, I also will say that like it is worth uh, reading. <laughs> I think it Virginia Woolf is a incredibly brilliant author and that every word that she included in Mrs. Dalloway was carefully chosen and to write such a short novel in this style that works really well and that is brilliant is a feat. And so if you are somebody who's like, I really love classics and I want to make sure that I read everything that's important out there, Mrs. Dalloway very well may make the list um, if, you know, if you get along with the writing style. Or if you don't, maybe maybe persist and, um, uh, you know, see how, it, see how it goes. My future plan with Mrs. Dalloway um, and specifically with Virginia Woolf is that I want to read The Hours by Michael Cunningham. That was our original plan with my group, that we were going to read The Hours first. Um, and that I wasn't going to read Mrs. Dalloway, but since The Hours uh, by Michael Cunningham is based on Virginia Woolf's Mrs. Dalloway, we decided to read Mrs. Dalloway first. So I want to read The Hours, and then I want to come back and I want to read Mrs. Dalloway again, and I want to annotate it. I actually had this idea that I would underline um, or color code uh, every time we were in a specific character's head so that I could follow the story in that way. Um, and I thought that maybe I would get a little bit more out of a novel than I did the first time around. And in that way, I think it's a classic. Um, a classic because you can read it over and over again and get something different from it. Um, I know that there were 
pieces that um, I could definitely dive into more and I could get more out of. And I like books like that. I like books that have layers to it and this is definitely a layered read. So I know maybe not the most like sweeping review, like you must read it, you must not read it. Um, but for those who are interested in classics, who are interested in stream of consciousness, I would definitely say please, please pick it up. But for those of you who are just absolutely agonizing over the um, style, maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe don't start here. Um, I have never read any other Virginia Woolf, so I'm not, I'm not really sure where else one could start. But, um, you know, maybe, maybe put it aside and come back to it again. Um, I, you know, I'm not really sure. If you're not getting along with it, I'm just like, I don't, you know, maybe don't agonize over it and put it aside. Maybe Virginia Woolf is not for you. But I feel like that is like, horrible to say because Virginia Woolf is this brilliant writer. Um, okay, that is it. Maybe a confusing recommendation. Um, I really enjoy the book. I can say that I really, really enjoy this book. This is a standout book for me this year so far. And, um, and that's it. Thank you for coming along on this journey and, um, and exploring this book with me. Um, yeah. And let me know how you like this style. Thank you so much for being here and I will see you all in my next one. Bye everyone.